Holy crap, it's been 10 vlogs already. I can't believe I've made it to 10 of these things. I took a pretty solid break of vlog filming between nine and this one, so you know it's kind of a kind of a little bit of a delay here, but I'm spontaneously just going to start this one right now. I have no plans for this. I have nothing laid out for how I want to do this other than I wanted to try to do uh, 10 things that I learned since starting to vlog. 10, 10 things I learned about vlogs since I've learned 10 things. Here we go. All right. So this one's pretty simple. It's not going to be all shot in one day. I'm gonna shoot this over the course of several days here at the beginning of July. Um, that includes some of these shots being involved on July 4th. What I wanted to do was kind of take a moment to hit each and every one of these 10 things that I've learned. And I kind of lied before when I said it wasn't planned out. It wasn't planned out that time, but since that first shot that you just saw, I've done some planning, so. I really hope you enjoy this. I know I will. This. Top 10 things I learned from vlogging. Ah. All right, so I'm gonna start off the list with number 10. Number 10 on the, oh, a turtle. Number 10 on the list of things I've learned since starting this is sometimes you need more filler stuff. And I'm really bad at this because number seven, I did a whole lot of, we're going here, and now we're gonna go here without really any filler content. And that's the problem with this visual medium is that sometimes it's better to show the story than just tell it. Almost a little bit guilty of doing that here. There's people with me and they have no idea what I'm doing. Aaron, Lindsay. See, that's something I could have shown and not told. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. And while there's nothing wrong with a talking head, you just really wanna make sure it's interesting when you do it. Here once. I'm gonna repeat this in a slightly different wit for you guys. Just one more time. If you're gonna spend all your time expositing, just write a book. But if you're gonna make a video, show. Don't tell. Now, that sounds really difficult, and it is. But you know what? Sometimes, you just gotta learn to jump for it. All right, number nine, timing is everything. What I mean by that is it usually takes me probably about two weeks at best, two months at worst, to get these vlogs out there. Surprising, I know. But an example of what I'm saying, I'm over here editing MLV9 right now while filming MLV 10 and cooking on MLV 11. And while there's not necessarily anything bad about being three steps ahead, mentally, uh, physically, it leads me to delaying very important work. And that's not, that's not really a bad thing when it comes to the YouTube atmosphere, but when it comes time to doing projects for other people, you know, I just, can't carry that with me. Turnaround time is hard to learn, it's, but it's vital. It's a vital thing. It's a vital thing to learn. Turnaround time. Wait. 
What number was I on again? So sometimes you don't always end up with something that you set out to shoot. For instance, we'll go back to MLV7. I really intended that to be more of a technical behind the scenes video. It really just kind of ended up being three guys enjoying themselves while shooting a video. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. It can be entertaining in its own right. It's just not what I originally intended. Now, the art is being okay with that. The rule doesn't necessarily hold to anything probably other than vlogging style. Because if you're writing scripts, you're planning, you're setting out shot lists, you got a crew, a schedule to keep, well, you probably want to stay on course. Number seven is finding your own style. Now those eagle-eyed YouTube veterans might notice that my style is comparable to uh, Casey Neistat's, who I do take inspiration from because he uses music and video in such a seamless way that I really enjoy when it comes to editing. What's going on here? That's pretty cool. These guys are slacklining. Yeah, as I was saying, I take a little inspiration from Casey Neistat, uh, as I do think most people do who don't just do regular talking head style vlogs. Uh, and it's because of the way he blends music. I wanted to adopt that immediately because I thought it was awesome and I thought it was really creative. And I think that I can expand on that and grow more in that. And honestly, I'm just hoping to grow to a point where can get past the comparison stage. It'll come with time. As I was saying, before it got dark. Until I get to that moment, I'm just gonna enjoy the journey. Number six is Always be ready to vlog. You never know what's gonna show up in front of you, so be prepared at all times. And I mean all times. Gentlemen, it's good to see you all again. Not them, I knew they were gonna be here. But, as an example, my last point, if I knew those slackliners were gonna be there, I would've made this part of the video, this this point right here, I would've done the. I would have done it there and then I would have made I would have made now a better example would be in the fifth vlog where things got a little down under downtown. This man has a kangaroo. Hey, There's no way if my life depended on it I could have accounted for that happening. But there it was. And that's one of the reasons why I vlog on my phone and not my DSLR right now. As much as I want to vlog on my DSLR, it's a lot easier to do it on my phone right now because I can just pull it straight from my pocket. And when I'm done... Number five is less is sometimes more. Now this is a really hard lesson to learn because sometimes I really like a bunch of the shots I get and I can't use them all. And it gets really hard, especially since I shoot this thing on a real-time basis instead of, say, the shots I get on Saturday coming before the shots I get on Friday. I don't typically shoot these feature film style. Although I'm shooting them that way for this episode. Really, I just need to learn how to rock out being more concise. See what I did there? 
So number four is length of vlogs. Now this is something that I've heard from several friends and something I've already been feeling myself. Now my intention is to try to keep my vlogs under the 15 minute mark. Sometimes that doesn't work out. I know YouTube works in a binge-like manner like Netflix and so I hope that 15 minutes isn't too much to ask of your time. But I do understand that it can, it can be a lot to ask. Which is why. Gratitude. That's number three. Now, I understand completely how 15 minutes could seem like too much time. I haven't quite earned that equity with you as an audience yet. And so while friends and family, I really am grateful and do appreciate your support. It's you whose time I haven't earned yet that I am super thankful for. It's you guys who are gonna give me a future as a vlogger here on YouTube. See, gratitude is everything. You do not have a right to another person's time, and so for them to give you a pedestal to speak into the world, it means everything as a creator. And I hope that as I go on, I'm able to provide value back to you guys, my viewers, because that's how we all move forward in this space, right? If we're able to provide value back to each other, the sky's the limit. Number two is don't be afraid to take risks. Always be ready to try something new to make the vlog interesting. See, it gives you new skills and new dynamic shots to add to your repertoire. And risk really is the name of the game. See, it's all about getting out of your comfort zone. Now, it's a risk for someone like me, a complete introvert, to be coming out here and talking to myself in public. See, the big secret is you're really just risking getting some funny looks from people you'll never see again in your life. And that's the thing with risks. They're only a risk until you take them. You just have to learn to bridge the gap between what you're not excited about doing and what you need to do. The number one point is shoot what you love. Now, that doesn't mean that you should never find yourself working on a project you're not completely enthusiastic about, but in terms of this creator-generated space, don't just make a vlog for the sake of making a vlog. If there isn't a purpose in the story you're trying to tell, then why are you telling it? If you're not interwoven into the seams of the narrative that you're trying to portray to your audience, then you're not going to care. And if you don't care, why should they?
shoot and shoot what you love. That's probably the number one thing I've learned in these 10 vlogs. So always make sure that you are shooting exactly what it is that you love to shoot, the stories that you love to tell, the things that you love to do. And always remember, it's crazy how much you learn in 10 vlogs. That's it. That is my top 10 things I learned from 10 vlogs. It's been a crazy half a year so far. I'm totally looking forward to the next half a year and seeing all the journeys that it takes me on. But I'll catch you guys in MLV 11. Okay, that one's kind of terrifying. To vlog, you must have a rock solid foundation. In order to vlog, you must learn how to tower above the competition. No? Yeah, I didn't think so either. Yeah, there's definitely not enough room on the internet for my, uh, for my dad puns. <laughs>